Well, good day and welcome to Heartline Ministries, a program where we like to look at issues of the heart and specifically as it relates to scripture to see how it is that God would have us live our lives. Um, my name is Tim Golden. I am pastor at Life on Main in Charlestown. Notice I do not look anything like Harold if you're used to watching this program. Uh, Harold's actually on vacation this week. and uh, But this week we actually have a special guest with us and his name is Tim Groose and he is the junior, senior, it is junior and senior high, junior right? Junior and senior high principal. Uh, and yeah. He's the principal over at Claremont Christian Academy. So we've asked him to come and join us and share with us a little bit about the school, this wonderful school that exists over there. As I said, this is a show where we like to focus on issues of the heart. And it might seem a little strange to really be focusing in on something that really doesn't seem like it deals with the heart. It really deals with more of the head. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's why I love about Claremont Christian Academy from what I know of it mm -hmm. and the interactions that we have as a sister church of ours is actually one of your campuses. Absolutely. And, um, and you're actually on staff with Harold Noyes. Yes, uh, I am uh, the youth pastor of Community Christian Church uh, and I serve the church in that facet as well mm -hmm. as a Bible teacher for the adult Sunday school. And then I fill in for, for Pastor Harry every now and then as well. <laughs> yeah, which is a good thing. You, you do a great job. I love Thank going you. over there, especially Thank on you. Sunday nights when you've preached. I, I even love it when I'm able to get stuff out of it oh, as well. I appreciate um, that. But, uh, but lots of people, when they think of ac academies or schools, we think of issues of the head. Yeah. But as I said, I think what I love about Claremont Christian Academy is that it deals with the whole person. It's not just dealing with the academics. It's dealing with the very fact of who these people are. And I'm reminded of a scripture verse, as, as everybody knows, we do like to talk about the Bible here. Um, but I'm reminded of that passage that says, train up a child in the way he should go. Sure. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Right. Uh, and that there's this aspect that being trained up, and that's not just the parent's role, it's the role of all of us as adults, mm. to the people that we come in contact with, the, the, the children that we see, to be able to help um, mold and shape um, their belief systems, not that we're going to exactly tell them what to do. They'll, they'll eventually weigh out what they will choose to hold as values or not, but that doesn't negate our responsibility to do that training and equipping of people. And I Absolutely. think the Claremont Christian Academy does a great job of that. Mm. But as we get into this, um, I just want to let people get to know you because they see our faces all the time. They really haven't had a chance to see you. What um, caused you to get involved with Claremont Christian Academy? Right, so I am... Um... I attended Bible College. I went to Word of Life Bible Institute uh, in 2011 and 2012. I interned with them um, and traveled the country. I had the privilege of being everywhere between Maine and Florida, um, Chicago, went down to Alabama, and practically everywhere between on a traveling ministry team that Word of Life Bible Institute uh, created that prepared young men for full-time ministry. And on our first tour, um, we were up in New England for 10 days mm -hmm. and the last stop we made was in Claremont and we did a chapel service for Claremont Christian Academy um, in their morning on a, on a Wednesday morning our last stop before we headed home to Scroon mm -hmm. Lake New York and um, I actually met their director at the time Adam Barton before his accident I don't know if many people know about him but uh, a wonderful man of the Lord um, and I got to uh, sing and preach and do ministry there and uh, then a number of years later or excuse me just a number of months later uh, I made my way to Northeastern Baptist College which is in Bennington Vermont and I got my I earned my undergraduate degree in biblical studies mm -hmm. my last year there I met Pastor Harold and became his youth pastor and we moved out my wife and I and uh, she was pregnant with our uh, first daughter first uh, you know our first child and um, uh, we um, started to get to know the kids in the youth group at Community Christian Church. And um, he, Pastor Harold's uh, granddaughter, uh, Alyssa, and his grandson, Corey, uh, went to Claremont Christian Academy. And the name, you know, uh, you know made a light bulb go on or whatever. And, and then um, as transition seasons started to unfold, are we going to stick with NEBC because I was on staff there? Or am I going to get more involved with church here? What am I going to do? What is the Lord calling me to do? Um, my wife and I were driving uh, back to Athens, Vermont, from Bennington one Thursday, and uh, the Lord just said, CCA. And so I uh, sent them my resume. Um, I met the director, uh, Colonel Pomeroy, who is still the current director. Um, 
and the Lord really took it from there. And next thing I knew, I was an administrator. <laughs> uh-huh. So <laughs> that's great. That's so, great. And uh, as I as I've um, spent time in, in serving the Lord over at CCA, He really has uh, established me there and established uh, hit the purpose He would like me to be involved in in terms of leading the next generation. Um, you know, being involved in shaping. Uh, the next generation for the cause of Christ, um, educating them within the person of Christ, um, all to His glory. So mm-hmm. it's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, and I think that's something that's really great with this is the fact that you're not just the principal there; you're living by example. Mm, yeah. Um, I, I love what you had to share there that you had two choices to go, but what you did is you went before the Lord right. and you said, "God, what do you want?" Right. And, and and so you. And, and, of course, I've known this about you ever since I've known you, which I think has been probably, what, about a year and a half, I think, that yeah. we've been connected. And um, But I've seen that over and over in your life, that there is this um, wanting to just live a life of obedience mm-hmm. to the Lord. And, you know, we can't train and lead kids where we ourselves don't go. Amen to that. And so the fact that you're in this role, I think, is very, very fitting, and you're able to get that, and mm-hmm. kids are going to be able to see that in your well, life. Thank you, praise the Lord for that. Uh, how long has Claremont Christian Academy been around and, like, how big was it then versus now? Yeah, that's some great question. So uh, my first year, 2016, 2017, um, it was their 40th year of wow. doing Christian education in the Claremont area. Um, so I believe that would be, it was first year was 1976. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, that's just a phenomenal accomplishment for Christian schools because they started in an era where Christian schools were popping up all over the place, but they were soon declining as well. But the Lord had preserved and blessed the ministry of CCA specifically, allowing it to kind of, you know, push through that um, those number of years where Christian schools were declining, especially in this region. Um, so they've been do- so this year will be the 42nd year um, of doing Christian education ministry in our area. And actually, um, they started out with a handful of students. Right, and some of those students are actually still around today, um, and some and, of them still are involved in the ministry today. And, and was it primarily what grades was it back then? Do you know? I know this is going yeah. back. I, no. Were you even born yet? Um, <laughs> no, no, not for another twenty years. You know, um, <laughs> so I know this one might be putting you on the spot. Yes, yeah. uh, 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 I believe it? it was elementary school, and they they grew into a you know high school for a while, and then they hit a spot where um, I believe the director and the the team at the time had to really weigh their options, you know, do we make a drastic change in how we do it or do we shut the doors? Right. And, I, you know, we acknowledge the Lord guided them to make that change and change the curriculum, change an approach, um, you know, having more of an open door invitation to people, which mm-hmm. we'll get more about in terms of the question, can only Christians go to Christian school? Um, but uh, so that that's how that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and now... Uh, today, we went, uh, you know, we started out, the, the school started out from teaching a handful of students in one campus to we are teaching over 100 students in two separate campuses, not just in the Claremont area, but in the Charlestown area, uh, stretching over the Connecticut River and, and, you know, having a lot of students from the Vermont, mm-hmm. the state of Vermont. Yeah, in fact, well. I don't know if they're able to get this, but if there's actually a full screen shot, you'll see actually in the pictures behind us here. Um, behind my big body. Um, you know, we've got the elementary campus, which is a Calvary Baptist Church uh, in Claremont, and that's grades K. Do they start with kindergarten or yes, is it first grade? Yes, they do, yes. Okay, kindergarten through sixth? Fifth grade. Fifth grade. Fifth grade. And then the high school campus at Life Fellowship in Charlestown on Route 12, they, that's your sixth through 12. Sixth through 12, yes, sir. So, yep. uh, and you said there's how many students now? Basically, uh, there's about, the there's around 60, 65 in each uh, campus. Wow. Yeah. So it's pretty From incredible. From a handful to that many. Yes. That is incredible yes. what God is doing. And it's the fact that God's preserved it. Oh, yeah. And it's not just preserving it through one little slump from what I understand either because there's, um, what, do you have sometimes people coming forward that, uh, you know, that obviously, you know, you can afford it. And obviously if you can afford school, you need to pay for it. Oh, yeah. You know, but I'm sure you probably get some people that come that's like, man, yeah, I'd like, love some of my kid here by... You know, finances are a little bit tighter. Um, And so, and I know you've done some things at times to help that, but I know you've done like fundraisers. Oh, oh, we do fundraisers. um, (laughs) We do. And what what, what are some of the, are are there certain ones that you do all year long? Or or do, I mean, from year to year? Yeah, yeah. So we we, um, pretty much are running fundraisers throughout the school year um, and, and sometimes throughout the summer. 
Uh, we start off with a big one called the Jagathon, where our students themselves get involved in raising money because they also know that um, you know the school has um, you know offered a number of our students discounts and it's these fundraisers that allow us to mm -hmm. offer these discounts so the students really to um, get involved in that and understanding mm -hmm. the weight of what it means and so um, they raise money and, and we have a big event um, over at the Monadnock Park in Claremont um, and uh, you know everyone goes jogging for an hour and, and however many laps they run uh, their donors will multiply their donation or some, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. um, so we do that every September. Uh, we, do, we do a number of different things. Um, there's a, the, at the end of the year, there's a, a golfing fundraiser. Um, you know, we do different like collection of uh, jars and things of that nature as well. We sell things mm -hmm. at, at certain times and, and different things like that. But in terms of, in terms of the finances of CCA and, and that approach. I mean, I, I was going to put it right out there. CCA um, does not have all the bells and whistles, right? We don't have the newest whiteboards. We don't have the highest education equipment. Um, some of our PE stuff, you know, our physical stuff is not, you know, brand new off the shelf. And we don't have a gymnasium, obviously. These, the buildings behind us are intended for a church campus, you know, a church and, and not originally a school. And so, I, you know, there. I don't want to put up a front that we have all of the stuff mm -hmm. that, um, you know, we would like. But um, we are a school that puts students first. Mm -hmm. um, and we do so under the careful um, watch of the Lord. And we, uh, we have what we need. And we are able to, through sacrificing and through running these fundraisers, um, we're able to include people into the, our unique education um, uh, because of that. These, these discounts and um, these fundraisers that we, we, at, we have um, enable us to you know, offer this education to a student or a family that, um, that otherwise would not mm -hmm. be able to have it. So, and you're, and it's not just that you're just a little some independent, nobody knows us type thing. You actually are um, having accreditation um, with another yeah. organization that you guys are a part we, of. Well, right? we are um, recognized by the accreditation of Christian schools, uh, ACSI, um, and we're kind of partners with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also were just approved as a, an official private school of the state of New Hampshire as well. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, uh, to God's glory, we have, a, we have a good name, you know, over 40 years. We have a good name in the community. Um, in fact, uh, we have um, almost no advertising. In fact, this whole event that you set up for us is probably the biggest advertising event that the school might have ever done. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but... but um, and it's all word of mouth, you know, yeah. uh, in terms of in terms of how we get our name out there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so. Yeah. And I know we'll announce this again a little bit later on, but I'm going to take the advantage to do it now if that's okay. Yeah. Um, because I'm, some people might be, yeah, we need more things like this. Mm -hmm. And you did not ask me to do this. Mm -hmm. Nobody's asked me to do this. But you do have a website. Yes, we do. And that website is? Uh, www.claremontchristianacademy.com. Pretty okay, simple. so very simple. <laughs> and... You know, if this is something, as you're hearing about what's going on with CCA, and if you're kind of being moved in your heart, that you know, I want to somehow be a part of this, I'm sure you wouldn't look donations down. Mm -hmm. um, you'd probably be receptive to anything like that. And so I just want to throw that out there, because mm -hmm. the incredible thing that you may or may not be aware is that this program is not just on community television, and I'm saying this to you now because I've got you in the hot seat, yeah. and I know you're not going to get up and walk out. <laughs> yeah. But um, we are actually very happy to to be able to state that thanks to TV, but also the internet and the wonderful uh, partnership with FACT TV here, um, this program is actually being watched by people in 27 different states oh, wow. across yeah. America and 11 different countries. Oh. And so, you know, we don't. you may not even be in this neck of the woods, but if <laughs> God's pricking your heart for this, um, could I trouble you to give them a mailing address? Um, um, if they want, if if somebody felt so moved, yeah. To, to um, so, uh, well, 
if you could send it to either campus, really. Um, actually, if you go onto our website, it, it has the, the addresses there, and you can send it to either Calvary Baptist Church. And I have an office at Light Fellowship. You could send it there as well. So mm -hmm. it's all on the website. Um, but, yeah, just yes. either one. And because we use their buildings, our mailing address are the same mm -hmm. addresses. So yeah. you just address, you just said that you wanted to go to CCA. So, okay. Yep. And there is an online avenue by which people can mm -hmm. donate. Which probably well. more people would probably choose, yes. I'm sure, yeah, these Yeah, a little days. more simple. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's great. So um, back to our questions. Uh, as we stated, it's more than just the academics. Yeah. Um, there's you, you guys deal with the whole person. Can you share a little bit with us about how it is that you don't just, you, you're not just about feeding knowledge to the brain. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> tell us a little bit more about that whole person education that these kids are getting. Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. And that, that's a question that will, um, can edify people whether they're in our neck of the woods or not. Mm -hmm. What is Christian education? And um, the way I would approach that is <clears throat> that uh, we teach in the cause and person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is that everything we do, whether it is a core class, your math, your English, your science, your history, or it is our daily Bible class, or when we bring in a weekly chapel speaker, everything that we, we do, we do under the umbrella, if you will, of the existence of God and the, the very real redemption that Jesus Christ offers to humanity. Um, because if you're learning about math or you're learning how to write, um, all of that can go under glorifying the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in terms of um, how that affects us with the difference between the mind and the heart in terms of, oh, I'm just, I'm just filling my head with knowledge, but I'm still you know, the same person, unmoved, unchanged. Um, we uh, believe that the scriptures are the word of God. And we believe that um, spiritual formation is possible through the avenue of mind and heart change. And the scriptures um, are powerful to awaken uh, both the young and old to the reality of God and the, the reality of their need of God. Mm -hmm. And so true heart change, and I'm sure you and Pastor Harold have discussed this numerous times on this show, is done through uh, the workings of the, uh, a combination of the workings of the scriptures and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Christian education uh, is founded on that very truth. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we um, edify them beyond the scriptures, uh, uh, not, not in the sense that um, we move past them, but in addition to the scriptures, we teach them academics for life. Mm -hmm. and for living and prepare them that way but they also have the wisdom of the scriptures mm -hmm. to um, skillfully live and act within their academics because the world today is facing tremendous issues of people who are geniuses and incredible businessmen and businesswomen and um, you know doctors and people but their ethics are out the window they're um, their their perseverance, if you will, is um, you know all for naught, and mm -hmm. so you have a situation where although someone is um, comparable, their character is at stake, and Christian education aims to, through the power of the combination of the scriptures and the Holy Spirit, um, aims to edify the character as well as make them. Um, comparable to do the tasks and to skillfully live life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what that brings back to my mind is the story of Mary and Martha. Yeah. You know, I think kind of helps portray that. You know, when Martha came out, she's like, hey, you know, I'm busy here, Jesus. Martha's just kind of sitting there. I'm busy doing all this work. We tell her to get over here and help me. <laughs> and, uh, and Jesus looked to Martha and said, Martha, you worry about so many things. Mm -hmm. Mary's doing what is better. Right. And what that carries with us is almost a lot of what you're talking about. It's the fact that, you know, we can be so busy doing, mm -hmm. and we can even do great things. We can even do things that seem beneficial to society as a whole. Yeah. But if we always let our doing precede our being, we've kind of gotten the cart before the horse. Correct. And so it's this aspect that 
of what I've seen and from the times I've been able to be over there and kind of eavesdrop in on what's going on over there, um, Claremont Christian, since I've got some association with life, yeah. um, I have seen this aspect of it's it said that character building and that's really the Mary stuff that that's building that foundation in the kids out of which they're doing will flow yeah and so that way they're doing that stuff that's better and letting the other stuff be second yeah nature after Absolutely. that but now I'm sure there might be some people that might have some questions sure you know and because I know I, th and these are some things I know I've heard over the, the course of years uh, regarding Christian education versus public education yeah. and I know we've dealt with a couple of the differences but one of the arguments I have heard from people is, well, aren't you really just removing the kids from society? I mean, doesn't doesn't the scriptures tell us that we're supposed to be in the world but not of the world? Right. So aren't we, in a sense, taking them out of the out of the world and kind of sheltering them right. in in this thing called Christian education? Or is there some higher purpose in this? Yeah. Could, could you shed some light on that? Yeah. For us? No, <coughs> so. Um, we, off, we have to often remind people that Christian education is not a bubble. Um, a lot of people want it to be, <laughs> okay? A lot of people want it to be this safe, wear a helmet and knee pads and elbow pads in terms of understanding life and being, you know, and not exposing them to some of the, um, some of the harder things in life. But it, 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 it really isn't that. Now, let me um, just comment on that and say that uh, the culture of our school is to lead with love and we strive to be a family like a school that watches out for one another that uh, takes care of one another and represents Jesus well and and see there's there's a difference like there in, in terms of oh uh, to love if, if we're gonna submit my child to your education I want them to be in this this bubble and um, we're going to um, cater to them, but we're going to do it under the teaching and instruction of Jesus Christ, who said, love, love. And so we're going to make sure that our students love the incoming student, that our staff loves that student, and that they watch out for one another, and that we represent Jesus in loving them. And, and that is the culture of our school. But when we talk about well, is that good because um, that separates them from what goes on in the real world? And, and I would, I, I would kind of come back with a question and say, do you teach uh, young people about what is bad by constantly exposing them to it? Or do you teach them what's true and right first? Um, and this is really basic logic. Uh, when someone has a counterfeit bill, they don't study the counterfeit bill and, and just know what wrong is no they know what right is in order to to understand what wrong is and avoid it and we have to understand that's what Christian education is not that we turn a blind eye to the counterfeit bill but we study the truth and we strive to live under the power of the Holy Spirit in truth and um, I explained it to one of our students like it the other day uh, oftentimes, when you're walking around, you see, you see a, uh, the city or the town you're in has recently planted some trees. And what they do is they'll put the tree in and they'll have some support lines on the, on the, uh, the bottom. And because the tree is so young that when the unforeseen weather circumstances or whatever happens, it's not strong enough mm -hmm. to wear the weight of the reality of you know, the, the situations of the world. Mm -hmm. um, Christian education is like that. We are those beams for the younger people to, mm -hmm. to be strengthened. So that, that, is, that is the culture that we have that strengthens mm -hmm. them that, oh, this is what people should treat one another like. This is how I should be treated. This is how I should treat people. Mm -hmm. and, and then we constantly, through the, you know, if I'm gonna follow the illustration, the sun and the water is the truth to help them grow, but eventually, the tree doesn't need those support beams anymore, the support lines anymore, and they can grow and become their own. And that is essentially what we want our graduates to do. They, they won't be at our school anymore. Mm -hmm. They won't be under our, our teachers anymore. They'll go out and be a uh, citizen of the United States and, and go to the colleges that they do or they go to the workplaces they do. But either way, they have been uh, taught the truth 
They have been shown how to live it. They have seen examples on how to live it. And you know what? Is that going to come up against what society is today? Of course. But the reason it will is because society today is not characterized by love, right. unfortunately. But um, God tells us to be salt and light. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and as you said, there, our society is not governed by those by love anymore. And, and so I think that's a big piece of it here, too. When I stop and think back before schools like this started springing up, um, the average American had a general understanding of what was right and wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, you had a, most people had a general understanding of, of the scriptures, where today we've become really, we're no longer really a post-Christian culture. We've become a, more of a pagan culture yeah. in a lot of ways. Because yeah, a lot of people don't have an understanding of who is this Jesus. And, um, and so it's, the kids that were in our public schools had some level of understanding initially. Today they don't, because mm -hmm. they're just not given it. And then you multiply that by the fact of the media that they're exposed to, whether it be the movies. I, mean, I think of movies back when I was growing up in the 70s that were rated R, are rated PG or PG-13 today. Sure, yeah. Um, so the kids are being infiltrated by things that back in our day they were not allowed to be. Um, and then you add things like the Internet and mm -hmm. the easy access of... Um, sex sites and things of that nature that they are kind of, and they're being bombarded these kids are being bombarded with so many adult concepts with no real frame of reference yeah. to look at it through or to critique it through yeah. and so I think that's one of the benefits I see um, from the, you, the school yeah. that you guys have is because you're helping to provide something else to like I said to compare that counterfeit with yeah, um, oh yeah. it's not just understanding that it's knowing what a real one feels like yeah and, uh, yeah and we're not naive to all of that you know uh, we have we have students at our school that that uh, know a little too much about that kind of thing whether that be their own action or the actions of another you know uh, we're not naive to it and we engage it with where each student is at yeah. you know and that's the big thing you you're providing a safe environment yeah. to deal with these issues. That's right. That's where right. in the school system, that's not right. there. In exactly. fact, a lot of the teachers, I hate to say, I'm, I'm not saying all teachers, though, so don't mishear me if you're not one of them, but I've seen teachers that almost encourage kids to act in ways that are very unethical. Right. Well, and, and um, a lot of times, uh, if they give any advice that is contrary to encouraging things that ultimately will harm them, um, is kind of uh, looked frowned upon in our society because then you're imposing upon um, this this um, subjective truth mm -hmm. concept. But when you do that, ultimately you misdiagnose. And we all know what it's like to go to a doctor and be told you got 10 days to live when that's not the reality. There was a misdiagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, you know when, or even worse, you're told you're okay when you actually got 10 days to live. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot when we don't approach the heart issue and with the truth, with the combination of the scriptures and the Holy Spirit, um, we misdiagnose and we tell people they're okay when they're not. And that is not to devalue them. That is not to disrespect them. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's to love them and to, um, to, to be humble and not say, I, I ha you know, I'm above you, but mm -hmm. I've received... The true diagnosis, mm -hmm. which is, I'm a sinner, I'm broken, but there's the one true God who has sent his son to die for mm -hmm. us and pay our price of okay. sin and offer redemption. Mm -hmm. And not that that makes us perfect by any stretch, but it gives us a right relationship with our creator, mm -hmm. whom he is now teaching us and instructing us on how to do life right mm -hmm. with a healthy approach. Uh, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and how to engage the people around us and how to have hope after death. And um, that's what is so awesome about Christian education is we're not, we are not, um, we're free mm -hmm. to actually engage the problems for what they are. Mm. And we've kind of addressed this question kind of around the bush, but just to ask it directly for those that may have missed it. Yeah. So do you have to be a Christian to go to a Christian, Christian school? Right. So uh, 
in some Christian schools, I believe that they do have that kind of um, standard. Mm -hmm. um, and Christian schools across, across the nation and world have different philosophies mm -hmm. on how they do that. For CCA, no. No, you do not. And we, we're, we're proud of that, you know, um, because uh, we want people to know that we are a Christian school that is all about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't want to close our doors to people who want to hear about Jesus Christ. So, right. so basically, it's like this. If you're not a Christian, that is okay. Just know that when your student comes and, and is, you're submitting him to our education, he will be taught from Christianity. But we, you know, we, we will by no means force that upon him. In fact, we create an atmosphere of inquiry. Mm -hmm. Every uh, high school student, actually, excuse me, every seventh grader, to 12th grader has Christian worldview, which is a mixture of apologetics um, and theology and things of that nature. For those who may not know, what is, <laughs> uh, so, so, you, so you're saying you're sorry for things? Is that what apologetics <laughs> no, 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 is? No, no. What, what, what is question. that? So um, apologetics is, is just a word that means defense. So they take a class that talks about how to look at the world and answer the big questions of life through the Christian belief, the Christian view, um, and then how to defend that view. And, you know, it, that talks about um, the Christian worldview really deals with the questions of life. Where do we come from? Uh, where are we going? Is there a God? Uh, am I a good person? Um, and what is my purpose in life? And every person, no matter what spectrum of politics or religion that you find yourself, you have to answer those questions. You right. just do. Um, and so our students learn not that we force this on them, but we learn what if, if they are a Christian, this is what you think and this is the hope you fool, this is the hope you have. And those classes actually create a place of free and respected questioning. Um, that if we do have students in our school that are not Christian, and we do, um, they are free to ask why. Why does a Christian respond to this this way? Why does a Christian think this way? My, I come from a family that's not Christian. You know, how, how am I to deal with that? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's, that's not uh, new to us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we love every single one of our students, whether they are in our faith or not. Um, and uh, we were excited that they can have the opportunity to not only hear about Jesus Christ, but be taught both scriptures and academics under his uh, under his umbrella, if you will. So probably contrary to some popular opinion of people who haven't really done true research into the concept of Christian school, Christian school is not real. You're really not about brainwashing the kids, <laughs> like no. some like to think. <laughs> you're actually doing quite the reverse. You're actually at least at, C at CCA, you're actually encouraging them to think through their faith. Absolutely, and that's a. I really appreciate you stating it that way. Um, you know, a good example is, uh, this was my first year, um, there was one Muslim student in, in our, enrolled in our school. Mm -hmm. And um, apparently, from what I was told, he came into the school a number of years earlier. So he was in CCA's enrollment for um, probably from middle school uh, onward. And his, mm -hmm. the, 2016 was his senior year. And um, he held to his Muslim faith the entire time. And you know what? He had Christian friends. And they engaged one another on faith, but they also, you know, after school hours, they would go and hang out and play and mm -hmm. do sports together, and they, they were loving, and it was awesome to see. Yeah. Um, but before 2017 summer, before his graduation, he was wrestling with a number of things, and uh, through a combination of talking to some staff members and teachers and students, uh, he came to profess Christianity, and that is not because any of us has forced him. We don't want to force people into Christianity. Just put that out there. But the Holy Spirit, through CCA and through the faithful servants, both teachers and students, was trying to convince this young man that Jesus is Lord and that he's a sinner, but Jesus loves him and died for him. And at some point that year, he surrendered to that truth and became a Christ follower. Mm -hmm. And um, that is just an awesome story yeah. that really talks about our heart behind why we do what we do. It's not just to 
edify the current Christian, because mm -hmm. certainly we want to do that, but it's to actually evangelize uh, the current mm -hmm. non-Christian. And in fact, uh, if, if one understands Christian maturity biblically, mm -hmm. to edify a, a Christian is really to get them to a point where they're evangelizing a non-Christian. Right. Um, and that is what we aim for. Mm -hmm. I guess I really have just three other questions sure. for you. <laughs> sure. Um, one would be, uh, you mentioned uh, that you have chapel services once a week. Yep. Um, now, do you, is that something that you personally do or the teachers lead? Or how do you go about um, determining who speaks at these, ser at these services? Yeah, that's a great question. So I am responsible for scheduling chapel speakers for the junior and senior high. And I, um, I choose... Um, people to come and speak who I know are, um, you know, well aware of the scriptures. They're they're leaders in the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. So I, I shoot for pastors and youth pastors and things and people of those uh, positions and and mm -hmm. people who have good esteem in, in the faith. Um, but I also include um, representatives of both ministry organizations and um, Christian colleges, and so we get people to come in there who talk about uh, missions opportunities for our students and that a lot of our students actually get pretty excited and engage with them um, short-term missions and things of that nature um, uh, camp ministries and, and stuff like that and then we also have different schools like um, uh, we had Bob Jones we had Davis College we had Northeastern Baptist College um, Word of Life, uh, so different co colleges that also hold to a Christian faith mm -hmm. that we kind of bring it in to expose it to our students and say, hey, look, you know, there is still an opportunity for you to be educated in the person and cause of Christ even beyond mm -hmm. high school, but into college as well. Which I like because it helps promote the larger body of Christ. It's Absolutely. realizing that there's no one church that's got the the corner on that's that shows. Right. As long as they're professing Christ, that's the big correct. thing. Correct, correct. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, the, there was another question that had entered into my mind that was also important. Yeah. Um, so there's still three questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, because one that triggered into my mind, I didn't stop to think about. The school is located, obviously, in New Hampshire. Correct. Can kids from Vermont come across the border? Absolutely. Uh, I come from Vermont across the border. <laughs> but yeah, totally. Um, we have a lot of students who are coming from the Springfield area. Um, a few that come from down by, by me, which is the Saxons River area. Um, you know, uh, we have students uh, even further north in Vermont, um, beyond Springfield, that come as well. A lot of our students are from New Hampshire, but um, we, we take students from Vermont all the same. And, and some of our families sacrifice um, big distances, you know, some families drive 40 minutes one way, you know, mm -hmm. to make it happen, but they know it's worth the, the sacrifices in terms of making sure that their child is getting a Christ-centered education. Yeah, there's have some of you that attracted, that made them rise, it's worth the sacrifice, yes. that's for sure. Could you share with us, and I know it's amazing how time's getting by on us, yeah. but um, I think probably about another 15 minutes left, but could you maybe share with us, um, because, and again, I, not that I have personally graduated from CCA or a Christian, co a Christian academy. Um, I was a product of our public school system and still may, or may I should say I'm a survivor of the public school system. <laughs> um, but obviously the, the, it's night and day. You can't even compare the two just because the one deals primarily with nothing but academics where, like I said, we're dealing with the whole person over here. Yeah. Um, could you share with us a little bit about some of the fruitfulness that you guys have seen maybe from some people that had gone to Claremont Christian Academy and what are they doing with their lives today? Yeah. Uh, how are they making an impact? Uh, or is it, or is it really just a substandard? I mean, you, as you mentioned, you know, you don't have some of the resources, but I do know enough about Claremont Christian Academy to know it is not substandard. Yeah. Um, but could you share with us some of the fruitfulness of the school's ministry? Yeah. Um, so, I I'm only starting my third year, so I'm not going to really to expound a whole lot on that. Right. In fact, I'll be referencing what I've been told, mm -hmm. um, not what I've witnessed. Um, I have witnessed some of it, but not the majority of it. But um, our, we have teachers there that were students 
that have you know gone through the entire kindergarten through 12th grade mm-hmm. through Claremont Christian Academy um, you know got married have kids whatever but now they're teaching at, mm. and there's and their kids are going yeah. and um, they're faithful uh, Christians in their church in their community getting involved and making sure the gospel is proclaimed um, uh, we have a particular family that uh, you know their son uh, is going to be graduating this year and the mom graduated from CCA and um, they are an incredible influence in our community mm-hmm. uh, Pastor Tim Frisch and his wife Julian mm-hmm. and their kids um, they're they're all CCA uh, well Pastor Tim is not but his wife and, and his side of the family is all CCA um, and they're just um, servants and volunteers you know, a lot of people complain about young people today. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. a lot of older people complain about young people today, and they say, you know, they're just disrespectful. They say all sorts of things. They're on their phones, and you know, they just have this description of young people that really isn't new, but it sounds new just because we have so much, uh, all these different avenues of actually talking about it today. Um, but one big fruit is that our young people are servants. Mm-hmm. You know, they are willing to work and they're willing to work hard and they, um, you know, uh, they're, they're not perfect by any stretch and we're not saying they are, but they are a head and shoulders above in terms of respect and submission and obedience than somebody who um, is not, um, you know, maybe not in the Christian education um, and simply because we are allowed to deal with the heart issue, you know, mm-hmm. and that is that is a, it's a huge blessing. difference. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so, and and I don't I don't mean to, at any stretch, um, bash public school at all. Um, I, I respect them and their efforts, and more than anything, I just my heart goes out to them, uh, and I just I I'm completely bewildered about how a teacher effectively teaches without the right tools to reach both the mind and heart. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that um, they're good people, and I'm sure that mm-hmm. they, they do well, and um, I know that they, they have success stories. Um, I just, uh, I know under the conviction of the Holy Spirit that uh, life is not just about this life here and now, but it's mm-hmm. about eternity. And I am so convinced that all education needs to be in light of eternal weight and not just YOLO. You know, mm-hmm. you, you only live once, uh, yeah. and um, so I find that to be um, where I stand mm-hmm. in that way. And, and in fact, we get we get a lot of, of students who um, a lot of families that uh, come kind of running to us mm-hmm. because you know when they think Christian, they think safe, and I think that's okay to assume, mm-hmm. and I think that's good that we have that kind of reputation. Yeah. We just want it to be deeper than that. <laughs> right. But um, there's, it's really sad that there's so many young people who are being exposed and experiencing things in public schools today. What, I mean, today it's been going on for quite some time now. But um, that actually the family doesn't know what to do. So they pull their kid out of school and they are frantically looking for somewhere safe to put them. Mm-hmm. And by God's good preservation and by God's good sovereign will, he knows everything. He has CCA in Claremont, and he has CCA in Charlestown, and he has offered a place for families to make their way. Um, and, and by God's will, and I hope and pray that, that they can send their kids to CCA and that when their kid is done, they can give him glory for providing a safe place, an excellent place for education, um, and a place where their, their child can reach higher in whatever facet of academics that is. Mm. So in our last few moments we have remaining, um, I know I've asked you a number of questions and hopefully I didn't put you on the spot too bad, no, no. Um, but is there anything else that's, that you're just passionate to want to share with people that maybe we haven't covered, questions I haven't thought to ask maybe? Um, any last minute things that you would want to be able to just share? Yeah. Um, well, I just want to ask you to prayerfully consider CCA, no matter who you are, um, and prayerfully consider Christian education, no matter where you are. Um, you know, we are a school that uh, doesn't have a lot. You know, we have a handful of full-time teachers, and we are able to do what we do because uh, the local bodies of Christ and even the distant bodies of Christ, uh, the different churches, support us 
And uh, we are constantly striving to keep this going so that families have a place to get Christ-centered education. So I would just prayerfully consider uh, CCA, just in terms of praying for us, um, if, if the Lord leads you to give, uh, he, the Lord would just bless you in blessing us. I know he would, and it would go, just it would multiply in just blessing us and, and helping us continue to do the ministry that we're doing. But I also want to, if, if you are in the neck of the woods, uh, prayerfully consider visiting us. Um, and visiting us, uh, whether or not, you, if you just want to know about the school from a personal um, perspective, call, email me, call me up. Um, our, our emails and phone numbers are on the website, and, and uh, I would be, it would be my pleasure to show you around and to show you what we do and why we do it on a personal level. And, um, and then we also heavily rely on volunteers. And all our volunteers have background checks and, and they're qualified, um, but we do need volunteers, uh, people who have a heart for young people, whether it's just someone to monitor one of our lunches or to be a teacher's aide in the class or whatever the case may be, we, we actually rely heavily on volunteers. And so if, if that's, you're able to do that, we'll, we'll get you in, we'll get you a background check and we'll, we'll make sure we get that done. Um, and that would be tremendously, tremendously helpful. And then um, if you've got kids, and you got grandkids, you know, wherever, whatever the spectrum of you are, wherever you are at politically or religiously, uh, you know, history has just proven that, that Christianity, when, when it enters into a society, true Christianity, that lovingly truthful Christianity enters into society, it always helps. So wherever you're at, it can only help your child, your family, and, and where you want to go. And uh, I just want you to carefully consider that as well. You mentioned teacher's aides. Yes. What exactly, what, 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 what does a teacher's aide do? If there, or someone want, thinks, no, you know what, I think I would like to volunteer, but you know, I, I've never done this before. Right. Can you give me a little bit of a synopsis of what would maybe be, what, what you're looking for from an individual who's gonna volunteer? Right, um, well, first of all, we have a volunteer kind of coordinator who knows all the needs and then um, interacts with those who would like to volunteer, knows their skill set, mm -hmm. knows what they're able to do in terms of their schedule and fits them accordingly. So um, it's not just kind of blindly and randomly throwing people in all sorts of different directions, but there's coordination to it. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of a teacher aid, that would all depend on um, what the teacher's expressing as the need, whether it is there's a lot of students per that teacher in the classroom, we just need another adult to kind of help keep things in line, or um, uh, you know, maybe there's a particular student that needs a little help um, staying on task, and while the teacher's you know, engaging the whole class, we need someone else to help that one person stay engaged that way. Mm -hmm. um, it, it could be a multiple of things. It could be, there's a period of the day where we're having a study hall kind of, and we need someone in there. It'd be helpful to have someone in there who, you know, knows a little bit about the subject and is just willing to be available for questions as we make our way around. You know, mm -hmm. it, the the needs and the, the the creativity really of volunteering is is almost endless. And so um, I would say even if there's a hint of interest, mm -hmm. um, I would say call us up and, and put your name out there, and we'll see what the Lord will do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Well, definitely been a pleasure having you on the show yeah. and um, and being a part of and, and being willing to share your heart um, you. for the school and also it's not just your heart it's God's heart yeah. you know it wouldn't be able to be sustained as it has been in what is actually um, on the borders of two of the most unchurched states in America. Right, right. In fact, I, think, <laughs> I think that New Hampshire and Vermont seem to keep switching places between which of the two <laughs> is the bottom of the barrel right. uh, as far as being the unchurched states in America. And so to see this kind of fruitfulness yeah. in the midst of that, you know God's hand is on it. Yeah. That this is not just man's doing. Yeah. Um, and so I just want to thank you for what you're doing over there. I know it, it's... A sacrifice of your time and your energy as well. Um, 
I don't know how you do it myself personally. Um, I would not have, I don't think, the energy apart from the Holy Spirit strength uh, beyond measure to, to be able to stay in that kind of environment with that many uh, young people. Um, well, we, it it, we it makes me it. tired just thinking about it. <laughs> um, but, they're, but they are. They're great kids. I, mean, I have walked through the church there at times um, out at the junior, senior high campus. Um, and it's just amazing seeing the difference as I walk through, have walked through and saw those classrooms versus when my kids were in public school and walking down the hall and seeing those classrooms mm -hmm. and, and the kind of attention that the kids give. Mm -hmm. And uh, one that one thing I, I have seen from Claremont Christian Academy has been, as you shared, not just this level of depth of relationship that the kids have with the Lord, but and, and the respect that they have generally speaking, for adults. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that one thing I see this school pouring into our children today is to realize they are not the world of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about preparing you for when you just get out into the real world. You're actually crafting them today yeah. to be involved today. Mm -hmm. You know, you actually encourage kids to get involved in their churches. And oh, yeah. I've seen a lot of the kids coming out of these schools, no matter what church, whether it's Life Fellowship, whether it's been Calvary Baptist, whether it's been Grace River up in Claremont, or any no one of a number of other churches, that the kids from Claremont Christian Academy take an active role outside the school mm -hmm. within these respective churches. Yeah. And, I, and I think that says a lot for what you're pouring in relationally to these children, to these kids. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. It, and it's, it's uh, just top notch yeah. um, all the way along. And so, again, thank you so much for coming and being a part of this. I am, as I said, Pastor Tim Golden, and I'm with Life on Main in Charlestown, New Hampshire. We have, have services on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock at the Old St. Luke's Episcopal Building in um, Charlestown, right there on Main Street. Uh, 176 to 188 is the number of that. Uh, come on out. We have more of a traditional style service as far as the old, older hymns um, with a couple of choruses. Service runs for probably about an hour, but we love the Lord, have good teaching out of the Word of God. Uh, if you're not in the Charlestown area and you're in the Athens, uh, Bellows Falls area, we would encourage you on behalf of Harold Noyes to go and visit uh, Christian Community Church there in Athens on Brookline Road. And their service starts at 9.30, and they have Sunday school at 11. Again, great time in the Lord uh, as they worship Him and dig into the Word of God, and you will not regret going to either of these two churches and it being an active part. There are, of course, other churches in the area. We would, you know, If you're part of one of those, please go to your own church. But if you do not have church to call home, Come on out and visit, visit us. We would love to have you. Uh, we also encourage you uh, to continue tuning into this program. Continue to get the word out. Our goal is not to promote ourselves. It is to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ, to promote the word of God. And so get the word out to your friends, uh, whether they live in the area or not. You can view us on Sapa TV in the Springfield area. We're on Fact TV in the Bellows Falls area. Or if you live in the Northeast Kingdom, you can view us um, up there in Troy, J, Vermont, um, on NEK TV as well. Don't have access to those or no people out of state. Just tell them, go on over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Heartline Ministries, and you can tune into the broadcast there, as well as going to Fact, the number eight, Dot com, uh, and you can view Heartline Ministries broadcast there. So lots of ways to tune in. Again, my name is Tim Golden. We're so glad that you joined us. Have a great day, and may God bless you.